Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Don Lemon mocks religious people who think prayers will help victims, Paul Ryan hits back. Many in the media have been mocking Republicans and Christians for feeling the need to pray for the victims in the Texas church massacre. CNN's Don Lemon went as far as to say that prayer can't help because the shooting victims in church were already praying. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Don't get me wrong. Prayers are important. They really are, said Don Lemon. This is not about religion. So spare me the anti religion tweets. Lemon said. You can keep them. I won't even read them. I don't care, he said. These God-fearing Christians were in church. They were already praying. Thoughts and prayers did not stop an oversight from the justice system which enabled a guy who attacked his stepson and assaulted his wife from getting a gun, said Lemon. Thoughts and prayers didn't stop a troubled person from buying assault-grade weapons that took the lives of 26 people in an instant, said Lemon. So tonight, I hope you will join me in praying that our leaders will actually do something of substance and action this time that precludes another thoughts and prayers moment, said Lemon. Paul Ryan perfectly explained why Lemon and the liberal secular media won't get it. It's sad and this is what you will get from the far secular left. People who do not have faith don't understand faith, I guess I'd have to say. And, it is the right thing to do, is to pray in moments like this because you know what? prayer works. When you hear the secular left doing this thing, no wonder you've got so much polarization and disunity in this country when people think like that, said Ryan. Liberal media mocks Rand Paul for being assaulted and breaking ribs. We have seen a lot of violence against Christians, and members of the GOP recently. Earlier this year Steve Scalise was shot at a GOP baseball game. Now Rand Paul has been seriously injured by an intruder in his own home. And according to reports his injuries are more dangerous than originally thought. But we have seen very little sympathy from the media. In fact, one liberal outlet made an article mocking Paul for breaking five ribs. New details that have emerged in the case of this weekend's stunning physical attack upon Senator Rand Paul confirm, you need more calcium Rand Paul, wrote Splinter, a liberal website associated with The Root, Jezebel and more. The tackle broke five of Paul's ribs. Seems like a lot of ribs. Weak bones? Need more resilience in your ribs? Milk is a great source of calcium and vitamin D, both vital for bone health. You get old and stop drinking milk and next thing you know every time a medium-sized neighbor tackles you all your ribs are snapping like the buttons on tearaway pants, says the article. Meanwhile if you had stayed on your milk game, you would have not only had brawny bones but muscles as well, thanks to the protein packed into every serving of milk. Try it in chocolate or strawberry flavors if necessary. The important thing is you keep downing glass after glass of that frosty creamy calcium treat. Don't stop until you're dead, says the article. Drink that milk Rand Paul. This is not a game out here, it concludes. Would they be this heartless if the victim was a Democrat? College professor explains how atheist massacre Texas Christians because white men hate women. An atheist killer? who regularly spoke out against religion, murdered 26 people at a church and left many injured. However, liberals continue to remain completely out of touch. In fact, according to Colleen Clemens, the director of Women's and Gender Studies at the Cutstown University of Pennsylvania, this attack happened because white men hate women. Toxic masculinity is killing everyone. Repeat. Toxic masculinity is killing everyone. Repeat. Toxic masculinity is killing everyone. Repeat, she wrote on Twitter. She explained her opinion further in an interview with the Free Beacon. When men feel disenfranchised, and usually it's white men, 
they will find a way to feel enfranchised, and killing a room full or street full of people is them trying to fill that empty feeling. That drive is motivated by a toxic masculinity and a person who is deeply affected by that toxicity can fall prey to any kind of fanaticism. It can be rabid white, misogynistic nationalism and it can be ISIS, explained the psychotic professor. There's a similarity in how America and ISIS teaches men to be, men must be virile, strong, powerful. And men are convinced that the reason they don't have that, power, is because of gains made by women, she said. There's a lot more space now at the table for a lot of different types of identities, and the anxiety that comes of that heightens a specific type of masculinity that thinks masculinity should always be in a place of power, she said. How are these lunatics becoming professors? Breaking Bin Laden's son just ordered Muslims to do something sick to Americans. Following the killing of September 11th mastermind Osama Bin Laden by Navy SEAL Team 6, Americans probably breathed a sigh of relief thinking that one dark chapter in our country's history had finally ended. Unfortunately, Osama's son Hamza is evidently intent on picking up right where his father left off. Spurred by his terrorist father's demise, the younger bin Laden recently put out a 25-minute video titled Osama the Fighter Against Invaders and Insider of Rebellion Against Tyrants through al Qaeda's media unit in which he urged young Muslims to take action against Americans. Said Hamza, I invite Muslims generally to take revenge from the Americans, the murderers of the Sheikh, Osama bin Laden, specifically from those who participated in this heinous crime making reference to his father's killing. He went on, rise in rebellion against oppression and tyranny, revolt against the agents of the Americans, initiate armed uprisings to overthrow them and establish the Sharia. The young bin Laden, who is now in his twenties, added, rise in rebellion against the arrogant tyrants. The Imam, Osama, may Allah have mercy on him, departed this world encouraging and inciting you to continue the journey of the revolutions urging members of al-Qaeda to attack Americans and other Westerners using arms, Hamza ascribed that an iron is only blunted by an iron. Do you think that America needs to take action against Hamza? New York governor attacks Republicans for praying after Texas shooting, it's disgusting. After the deadly shooting in Texas, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo took to Twitter to insult people who feel the need to pray for the victims and their families. We have pastors, priests and rabbis to offer thoughts and prayers. What we need from Republicans in D.C. is to do something. Lead, wrote Cuomo. Like the murderer in Texas, many liberals are atheists and of course don't understand the importance of prayer. Prayer helps us connect and it leads to action. That is part of why conservatives donate to charity so much more than liberals do. Cuomo wasn't the only person to insult those sending thoughts and prayers. MSNBC's Joy Reid went on a long rant against thoughts and prayers as well. Remember when Jesus of Nazareth came upon thousands of hungry people, and rather than feeding them, thought and prayed? And all those lepers he came upon, and rather than healing them, thought and prayed, and thought and prayed? Tweeted Reid. Such thinkers and prayers, these supposed inheritors of his faith have become. Such thinkers and prayers. Those money changers and Pharisees, boy, were they relieved when Jesus came in, saw their graft, and walked away, thinking and praying. I mean, why actually do anything at all, when it's so much easier to just think and pray, and think and pray? It so happens that in the secular world we regulate things like guns through laws. And you can't think or pray those up. Someone has to act, she tweeted. Bill Clinton just declared Trump voters are more vulnerable to false claims, he got tripped into. Former President Bill Clinton is still probably upset by the fact that he is not living in the White House again for another four years. However, he is certainly handling it better than his wife Hillary, 
since he actually won presidential elections. However, Clinton's experience swaying voters clearly does not preclude him from making dumb and false statements about conservative voters. Bill recently spoke at his alma mater Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., on the 25th anniversary of his first election win, and in his speech he alleged that people who voted for Donald Trump are more vulnerable to false claims. Ex-President Clinton is clearly oblivious to how gullible liberal voters are when presented with false claims. This was proven by the fact that former Democratic President Barack Obama was still supported by left-wingers despite telling them the lie of the year that they could keep their own doctors under Obamacare. In his address, Clinton spewed more odd facts about Trump and Hillary voters, saying, In the last election, in the counties that Hillary carried, you find 64 percent of America's GDP. In the more numerous, rural counties carried by President Trump, you find 36 percent of the GDP, even though the median income of a Trump voter was higher. What does that tell you? Even poor people are more hopeful if they're in a dynamic place. He then said about Trump's supporters, being trapped with a lack of mobility is more damaging emotionally and makes you more vulnerable to false claims, from my point of view, than if you're poor. Clinton the alleged that President Trump is a bad leader, stating, which works better in economics, politics, and social policy, addition or subtraction, multiplication or division? You can win more elections in the short run when people are mad with subtraction and division, but it's a lousy way to run a railroad. Clinton's words were poorly received, with one internet commenter responding hilariously, his economic dribble makes no sense whatsoever. I think he's totally losing it. I can see him wiping the jewel from Hillary's lips while she wipes the jewel from his Peter. I'm talking very soon. Do you want loudmouth Bill Clinton to finally go away? Donna Brazile confronted on The View about helping Hillary during primary, her response is shocking. Donna Brazile has bravely shared information about how Hillary Clinton's rigged the primaries as well as other DNC secrets. However, it appears she may be trying to backtrack and doesn't want to admit certain things. This was made clear during her interview on The View. Well, first of all, I never used the word rigged in my book. I used the word cancer that I was uncomfortable with the cancer we found," said Brazile. But this was a lie. She did specifically use the word rigged in her book on multiple occasions. I had promised Bernie when I took the helm of the Democratic National Committee after the convention that I would get to the bottom of whether Hillary Clinton's team had rigged the nomination process, as a cache of emails stolen by Russian hackers and posted online had suggested, she wrote in her book. She was then asked about the questions she leaked to Hillary during the primary. So, in the book I describe two things. One, I describe when I was first told that my email was part of John Portesta's dump, my first reaction was oh, I can explain it, let me go home and look at my stuff. I couldn't find it, she said. What I did, because I know myself, I called up everybody and said I need to get the material I sent you. I couldn't find it. I apologized, hell yeah I apologized and I quit CNN that night because I could not explain it. I could not find my, actually, I could not find my server, she said. 